What can we say after 26 years? That God is faithful, right? That God is good. That God never leaves us. That God follows through. And I want to say this. God is not finished yet. He's not done. He's not done. And I'm not going to say this is just the beginning, because for some of us it's been 26 years. That's about as long as I've been alive. (laughs) Right? But just because it's not just the beginning doesn't mean that it's near the end. He's not done yet, and he's not done with us. He's not done with this church, and he's not done with you. And I want to read you something. I want to read you something that Paul says, and he's writing in Philippians, and this is what he says. And, he, and we can take this as a letter to us as a church and as individuals. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. <clears throat> In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And here it is, ready? Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. He started something 26 years ago here at this church. And he started something in you. For some of us, it was today. He started something in you. And until Jesus comes back, until Jesus comes back, there is always more. Until he comes back, until the day of Jesus, there is always more. There is always more. You see, we are part of a huge story that God is writing. And we're just playing our part here in this community. God has a grand narrative, no matter whether, no matter, no matter, no matter, <laughs> sorry, la, la, la. no matter how long you've been in relationship with Jesus, whether it's been a month or 26 years or however how long, you play an important role. You play an important role. And God's doing something in you, a great thing, a great thing. Now let's continue reading. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long for all of how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best. It may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. In verse 7, he says, all of you share in God's grace with me. The story that God is writing in our lives is not just for us, but for our brothers and sisters and for this community here. We share how God works in your life affects me. And how God works in my life affects you. It's not just you. We are all interdependent. We depend on each other. We depend on each other as we all lean on Jesus and as we all lean on God. And this is why this is so great. For 26 years, praise and worship has been coming from this place. Has been come. This place is filled. This temple is filled. This temple is filled with praise. And he inhabits the praises of his people. For 26 years, prayers have been answered. For 26 years, God has given us miracles, but he's not done. There's still more. He's not finished. He's not finished with us yet. He's not finished. So how do we know he's not done with us? He tells us that in verse 9. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more. Because there's still more love to give. There's still more love to receive from the Father, from his heart. There's still more service to do. There are still more opportunities to give God glory with our lives. With our lives. More in knowledge. Understanding God and understanding who he is. Becoming more like him. Walking in his ways. 
There's more. There's more. There's more. And depth of insight. I understand this, and, and, and we see an example of this, but to see things with the eyes of faith. Not to see things just as they are, but to see them how God sees them. And not just to see things just uh, surface level, but to look deeper and looking at things with the eyes of the Spirit. And look at what Paul says here, verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Let me tell you what happened to him. Let me tell you what happened to him. <laughs> Y'all know what happened to him, right? But in this time, he was in jail. He was imprisoned. For what? For preaching the gospel. Now, for most of us, that's a discouraging, that to be arrested and go to jail, that is discouraging. But Paul is exercising this depth of insight, seeing, look, that this is good that, 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 that this has happened to me. And then he says this in verse 13, as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. What should have discouraged him, he sees right through it, and he sees the truth behind it. You see, he didn't, he didn't give credit to the enemy. He didn't give credit to him. He said, no, I'm here because God sent me here, and I'm here on a mission. I am chained up, and I'm bound up, but I'm free in the spirit. I'm free in the spirit. I'm not looking at my circumstance. I'm not looking at my surroundings, but I'm here on purpose. I'm here on purpose, and let me tell you why I'm here. Because the Lord sent me here, and because he's good, and even though I'm here, he's still good. Even though I'm here and I'm chained up here, and you think you got me chained up, I'm free in the spirit. And I have a new life, and I'm a new creation, and I'm no longer bound by sin because of what Jesus has done on the cross. And this is Paul's heart. And he was proclaiming that. He was proclaiming that all up in the prison. Yep, I'm here because of Jesus. Jesus sent me here. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and beat me. Go ahead and beat me. Beat me. All you're going to hear from my mouth is praise. All you're going to hear from my mouth is glorifying God. That's all you're going to hear from me. And that's, that's what it is. That's, that's what it is to look at situations with depth of insight. And this is the thing. This is the thing. He understood. He understood that though it seemed that he hit a wall, though it seemed that he hit rock bottom, for God, that's not rock bottom. And for God, that's not a wall. But it's an opportunity to break through. It's an opportunity to push through. And that's what he saw. And that's what he saw. You see, it's so easy. It's so easy to look at circumstance and be discouraged. It's so easy, right? And let me tell you something. The world doesn't get it. The world doesn't get it. But we get it. We get it. The world sees these, um, sees these hurdles or, or, or these trials as things to stop us. But that's not. But that's not our heart. But these are opportunities to give God glory. Paul could have been discouraged in his jail cell. He could have, but he didn't. The world sees the things of the Lord as hurdles. What, what may seem, again, as a wall or rock bottom, the Lord doesn't see it like that. I just want to give you just a quick example. Last night, we were at a... Uh, um, uh, we were at a dinner party. It was a surprise party. My, my father and my mother pretended that they were having an anniversary party so that his friend can surprise his wife for a 40th birthday party. And she came, and my parents even got a gift out of, out of that uh, because the wife thought that um, it was an anniversary party. And she came, oh, here, here's her gift. But when she came in, surprise. And it was great. It was great. So at this restaurant that, 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 that we were at, they had... Um, karaoke they had a karaoke and uh there was this guy singing there man and he thought he was he was it and he was singing the song um uh 
we will, we will rock you. And he was singing, and he, he was feeling it. He was feeling it, right? So then afterwards, me and Nikki were like, hey, let's go ahead. Let's go up there. Let's go, let's go do it. So me and Nikki did the, the song. I don't know if everybody knows this song, but the song is by uh, um, NSYNC, and it's called Tearing Up My Heart. And me and Nikki were just tearing up my heart when I'm with you, right? We were doing it. Afterwards, Nikki goes to get a drink of water, and this man comes up to Nikki and was like, hey, so, um, uh, so, so does your boyfriend, um, <laughs> everybody thinks we're dating, but he said, does your boyfriend, uh, uh, does your boyfriend, like, is he a musician? Does he do music stuff? And uh, Nikki was like, uh, he uh, sings at church. And this guy was like, <laughs> this guy's wasting his time at church. Are you serious? This guy could be top 10 American Idol. Look, and let me tell you, I know, I know. I'm the lead keyboardist for this band, Hearts. Listen, I know music. I get it. I get it. And Nikki told me that. I'm just like, you don't get it, man. It's not about the stage, about making it about the accolades or popularity. I just want to give God glory. That's just all I want to do with my gift. Nobody heard me. He would hear me. And we do everything for the audience of one. We do everything for the audience of one. You see, this guy is still trying to make it. He probably started his dream when he was younger than I am, but he's still, he's still trying to make it, right? But he sees the things of the Lord, the things of the Lord hindering him from making his dream happen. But for us, the things of the Lord, the things of the Lord only strengthen us. The things of the Lord only push us forward and closer to him. But this is the truth. Sometimes the things and a lot of times the things of the Lord aren't the easy things. Sometimes it is heartbreak. Sometimes it is loss. Sometimes it is pain. And I want to look at somebody like that. And I've preached this 50 times, but it's so good, all right? So Job, let's look at Job. Job 1, 6 through 12. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing, Satan replied? Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then. Everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. I want to be the type of man the type of son of God, that God would have that much confidence in me. This is the thing. This is what God knew about Job, that Job did not love his things more than he loved his father. That Job knew his father, that Job knew God. Take everything away from him, Satan. Watch him worship me. Take everything away from him. Watch him give me glory. Put him through hell. Watch him praise my name and he will not curse me. And he will not curse me. But don't touch him. Don't touch him. And let's understand something. Let's understand this. That Satan can start a lot of things, but he does not finish anything. He, does not, he can start a lot of trouble in our lives, but he's not in control of the outcome. He's not in control of the outcome. You know who's in control of the outcome? God's in control of the outcome. Let's look at this, Romans 8, 28. And we know this so well. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. All right? So we're going through hell. We might be going through it. We might be going through a difficult time, just like Job went through. He lost everything. Everything. were going so bad. His friends were like, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do to offend God so, so terribly? 
And Job just kept forward. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. And it was, and it was his heart towards God that he had. Understanding that in all things, God works for the good of those who what? Who love him. So understand this. We may lose everything. Whoa. <laughs> we may lose everything. We may lose everything. We may fall down the stairs, right? <laughs> right? And circumstances are out of our hand. But we can be in control of one thing and answer this one question. Do you love God? Amen. Do you love him with everything? Do you love him with your whole heart? Your life may be at a standstill. Your life may be frustrating. It may, it may feel hopeless. But the only thing that you're in control of is your love for God. And that's the only thing that you got to worry about. Do you love God? Do you love him? Because if you love him, we can lose everything. And, and I'm not, and please, I'm not saying that it's easy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that losing things is, is an easy thing. Losing, thing. losing things hurt. And not just things, but people, situations, circumstances, losing our jobs, family members passing away, breakups, disappointments. Those things hurt. Life hurts. But our circumstances, our circumstances don't determine our outcome. God does. God does. And our job is to love God through it all. Love God through it all, just like Job did. Just like Job did. But let's look at Paul. Let's, let's, let's come back to Paul. Because his heart is so, is so real. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Now, some of us here, some of us here may feel imprisoned like Paul does. Maybe it's imprisoned by circumstance. Maybe it's imprisoned just by, I don't know, sickness or, or depression or, or things like that. I'm here to tell you that you are not at your end. I'm here to tell you that God is not finished with you yet, and God has not forgotten about you. I'm here to tell you that there is strength for you. I'm here to tell you that there is a plan in what you're going through. If you can honestly say, yes, I love God, then your suffering is not in vain. If you can honestly say, yes, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, then what you're going through is not in vain. It is a part of the bigger picture that, that, that God is writing, the part of the bigger story, part of the grand narrative that God is writing. He is not done with you yet. This is only part of the story, and he's going to see you through all the way until, until Jesus comes back, until Jesus comes back. This time here, this time here, just like when Paul was in prison, he wasn't just, he wasn't just, oh, Lord, just to himself. He wasn't with his head down ashamed. He wasn't, but he was proclaiming the goodness of God, so much so that people were getting saved. In his circumstance. How can God turn terrible circumstances into good things? How can that happen? Because his name is getting glorified through it. His name is getting glorified through it. And just like Paul's life, Paul's suffering, and his joy, and his confidence in the Lord was a testament to the people around him, your joy and, and, and your love for God is a testament to those around you as well. As you're going through what you're going through. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with you yet. There's still more. There's still more for you. And I'm not talking about more things. I'm talking about more love. I'm talking about more of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit. That you would be able to pray for people and people would be healed. That people would come to you seeking salvation. Tell me about this Jesus that you serve. Tell me about him. I need him in my life. That you'd be able to speak life and truth and change would break off of people's, pe just people's minds and people's lives. That you would be used in that manner. You would be used in that manner. That's the more. That's the abounding in love that Paul is talking about. Walking in the power and fire of the Holy Spirit. Not, not just having things. Not just having a happy life. We can't. Our faith cannot grow if it is not challenged and stretched. It cannot grow if it is not challenged and stretched. So God is using our situations to grow us, to make us more like him, to refine us, to strengthen us. 
so that we can do his work. That's what he's doing. And this is what Paul understood. This is what Paul understood. He had his head held high. Look, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here, right? I'm here. Okay, I'm here. You have me in chains. Okay, but guess what? I serve a great God. I serve a great God. And look how confident he was. Look how confident he was here. In 19, verse 19, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. What you're going through is going to turn out for your deliverance. The battle that you're fighting is going to turn out for your deliverance. How do I know that? How do I know that? Because if you love God, he's working it out for your good. That's what he says. That's what he's telling us. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed but will have sufficient courage. Can we say that about the situations that we go through? This is the kind of heart that the Holy Spirit gives us. We have an opportunity, opportunity to view our circumstances as opportunities to worship God, not as defeat, not as defeat. And then he goes into this, verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is, by, which is better by far, but is more necessary. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that though my being with you again, by my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. And this is what I want to say. When, and this is what he says here in verse 24. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Yeah, I'm suffering. Yes, I am cha- I, I'm in chains. And it would be better to be with Christ. But the Lord has me here in this moment, right here, right now, for your sake. For the people around you. And he has you where you are, right here, right now, so that people can see the work of God in your life, so that people can see the power of God in your life, so that people can have hope and understand that circumstance doesn't have to bring us down. But instead, circumstance is a step up, is a step to step upon to the next level. Everything that you're going, you know, I had a friend tell me this one time. Everything that you're going through right now, everything that you're going through right now is just preparation for the next step that God has for you. Every battle that you're fighting right now, every battle that you're fighting right now is, is just a step for the next level. Next level. And this is what I, guys, guys, please hear my heart. When I mean next level, I'm talking about being closer to God and being used by him more deeply. I'm not talking about fame and popularity. As a matter of fact, the closer we get to God, the more of those things we lose. We lose our comforts the closer we get to God. The more that we lay things down for Jesus, the more that we push the world aside and the, and, and the less that we're like them, the less that we fit in with them, the, the less that we fit in with them. But God's not finished with you. God's not done working in your life. God is doing a good work, and he will see it done. Circumstance, don't let circumstance hinder it. Just like Paul. Paul didn't let circumstance hinder it, but Paul allowed his circumstance to amplify the work that God was doing in in him, and he understood that because he loved him and he's walking hand in hand with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, every step that he takes is not in vain, but it is purposeful. It is for the glory of our King. It is for the glory of Jesus. So be encouraged, Acts 2. This is the good news. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with us yet. Hold your head high. Hold your head high and understand that you're walking with the King of Kings. Don't let circumstance discourage you. You are not pushed up against the wall. You're not. There's a way out. And God's walking you through it. God's walking you through it. I want to do something here. And I want to sing a song. It's called After All These Years. It's a powerful song. And um, let's just worship. Let's just worship. Oh, I need it though.
I don't know about you, but that word just really stirred my spirit. A stirring in my spirit. You know, the Apostle Paul was put in prison to write most of the New Testament. He was in prison when he wrote several of the New Testament epistles. And understand this about Paul. He knew what jailbreak was. Remember that, Pastor Jamil? God did break Paul out of one jail. Remember that story? So when he says, I know how to be broke out of jail and I know how to endure jail, he got both experiences. So folks, whatever you're going through, as Pastor Jamil just challenged in, in, uh, with the word today, it's for your deliverance. It's for your deliverance. Even if the devil started something. I mean, that was, a, that was a great point, Pastor Jamil. Even if the devil started something in your life, God has the final word. Even if the devil meant a thing to be evil to you, God, because you love him, will turn it around and make it into something good. So be encouraged today. Sometimes before rain comes, it gets dark. If you don't want the rain, you don't ask for rain because the sky's got to get dark. Darkness comes before the rain falls. So God's word to us was strong today and clear. No matter what you're going through, it's for your deliverance. And when you come through it, you will have a grace and an anointing I don't have. I don't have an anointing for having lost an infant or a young child. If you've ever lost an infant or a young child, you have a grace to minister to somebody else there that, where I can't. Because I've never walked through that. And every one of our experiences, as you heard Pastor Jamil say, it's not for me. Paul's like, this ain't about me. It's for the good of all of you. You know, people lined up to visit Paul in prison. He named some of his guests, but I don't think he had, could, could even possibly name them all. In his pain, people came and he ministered to them, him in prison. I mean, wherever you're at today, don't stop giving. You still have something to give to somebody. You still have something. As you give out of even a place of pain, God will give back into you the very thing that you need. Amen. I'm sorry, Pastor Jamil. I was just stirred today. Share that song with us. Share that song with us.
pray father father thank you thank you for your faithfulness to us father there's truly no one else like you god so father today we celebrate we celebrate your faithfulness god encouraged in knowing that there's more god knowing that you're not done with this house you're not done with us god we're going to push forward, Father. We're going to push forward, God. We're going to push forward. We're going to push forward in the student ministries, God. We're going to push forward in the young adults' ministries, God. We're going to push forward in the children's ministries, Father. We're going to push forward in our Bible studies, God. We're going to push forward in the prison ministries, God, and the nursing home ministries, Father. We're going to push forward in the house groups, God. We're going to push forward in our marriages, God. We're going to push forward, God, in our relationships. We're going to push forward with our children, God. We're going to push forward in our circumstances, God, because we know that you're not done with us. We know that we have a hope, God. We know that we have a hope, Father, that can't be taken away from us, God. And we're going to push forward, God. You've been faithful for all these years, God. You're going to be faithful for so many more. And God, you are in control of the outcome of any circumstance, God place it at your feet, God. And we leave this place, Father, with our head held high, confident in who you are, God. We just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here with us. Yes, God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Strengthen every heart here, God. Refresh every heart here, right here, right now, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for all that you've done today, God. And Father, we just, we just bless the food outside, God. We ask that you would just bless our fellowship together, God. We celebrate you today. And we thank you. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good. I'm not sure if there's instructions. We're just going outside. Yeah, just go outside and get some food. <laughs>